continue to push back as they rally for sanctuary city status for immigrants in the City of Angels. Anna Marcos brings us this report from one town hall. A full house at this town hall meeting near downtown L.A. Residents, immigrant groups and city leaders, including Council Member Gil Cedillo, met to help rev up the push for sanctuary city status in L.A. The support for a sanctuary ordinance in this city is wide and is deep. We know we're going to fight for our DACA, right? DACA has got to be preserved. The t-shirts here seem to match the feisty mood. Groups like Indivisible Highland Park and ACLU People Power rallied for more protections for immigrants. Most residents here want the LAPD to disengage from federal law enforcement authorities and offer no cooperation in the Trump administration's crackdown on immigrants. Police ought to be protecting the entire community and treating them equally. Some protested the divide between rich and poor immigrants. If you work hard and contribute to the economy and send your kids to school and obey the laws, that's not good enough. But if you have $500,000 cash, bam, you put it on the table, you got a green card. There's something really deeply wrong with this immigration system. L.A. is now in the process of achieving sanctuary city status, but it's not there yet. These immigrant supporters plan to keep on pushing until sanctuary status begins to offer immigrants some protections. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. Mayor Eric Garcetti says the LAPD already enforces Special Order 40, which bans LAPD officers from detaining people based on their immigrant status. City leaders are working on a legal fund to help immigrants on deportation matters. Would you know what to do during a major earthquake? Well, people worldwide practice protection during this month's Great Shakeout. And as Gil Reyes reports, L.A. is taking extra precautions with an earthquake warning system expected to be online soon. Kids at L.A.'s Natural History Museum participate in an international earthquake drill. Millions of people taking part in the Great Shakeout, where people drop, cover, and hold on. That means to drop to the ground, hold your head and your neck with your arms, and hold on until the shaking stops. L.A. City Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas warns Angelinos to get ready and to know the drill inside and out before the big one hits. Mayor Eric Garcetti says September's devastating Mexico City quake underscores the importance of retrofitting L.A.'s buildings. Concrete and wood frame structures with weak supports are most likely to fall first. Though much work lies ahead to retrofit every L.A. building that needs it, hundreds have been upgraded in recent years. More than 2,000 other structures are already underway for their retrofits, and those are critical. But we also are investing in the early warning system. The mayor referring to Shake Alert, a smartphone messaging system warning you before a quake arrives in your area. Shake Alert does this by tracking seismic waves. It can also disable machines during a quake. It can stop trains in their tracks halt elevators and drop you off at the nearest floor so you're not stuck there. Even trigger backup generators so you don't get stuck in the dark. And I've made a commitment to delivering this by 2018 to all Angelinos via our smartphones, and I intend to keep that promise. Back at the California Science Center, officials set up this mock living room to simulate a 7.8 magnitude quake. It's been said before, but it is worth repeating. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. For some potentially life-saving tips, log on to the website readyla.org. Reporting from Exposition Park, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. In California alone, more than 10 million people took part in the Great Shakeout. Expect to see first responders at the Los Angeles International Airport arriving on bicycles. That's right. Rasha Goel explains. A six-month pilot program is helping provide additional quick response at LAX to handle medical emergencies. It's all part of the new bike medic program where instead of sending an ambulance, cycle teams will arrive on the scene and assess the situation. By using bicycles, the initial response is expected to take less time. 
By having fire department personnel arrive so quickly, they are able to perform medical assessments and treatment without the need of sending a fire engine and rescue ambulance into the central terminal area. Officials say majority of emergency medical service incidents at LAX do not result in ambulance transports to the hospital. Therefore, sending fire companies and rescue ambulances is not time or cost efficient. And having a paramedic on the bike does have its advantages. Bikes are great for accessibility. Having the diesel rig uh, out here in the horseshoe and waiting in traffic, it could be a cardiac arrest or a diabetic emergency and that patient's not getting the highest level of care. On the bikes, we're able to get on scene within minutes or seconds, depending if we're on a call or first uh, waiting on standby. The Bike Medic program has been around for more than 15 years, but what makes the pilot program unique is the addition of a nurse practitioner and a firefighter paramedic. These resources will help in handling small issues to critical medical emergencies. The nurse practitioner has an expanded scope of practice above the level of paramedic. In addition, hours of operation of bike medics have been extended. We now have two bike medics staffed at LAX Tuesday through Friday. And with the holidays around the corner, travelers can be assured they will be taken care of. At LAX, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. This pilot program will be assessed after the six-month period to determine whether it will be extended or not. Some students got the day off from school for a day of play at the park. Hope is this leads to healthy habits. Gil Reyes has more from Silver Lake at Councilman Mitchell Farrell's Fitness Challenge. Gil. Well, Yana, the point of the entire day is to get young people thinking about exercise and physical fitness as an everyday occurrence and not just something they do every once in a while. The special guest of honor at today's event, an Olympic gold-winning gymnast. Are you up for the fitness challenge? These fifth graders are, led by Olympic gold medalist Nastia Lukin. You may remember her gold-winning gymnastics performance from the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. Wow! <laughs> We're just going to be active today and I'm going to kind of lead a warm up and then go through some of the stations with them and just teach them the basics of it. An entire school day dedicated to exercise. It's all part of Councilman Mitch O'Farrell's fourth annual fitness challenge. Students participating in gymnastics, yoga and running drills. We know that in California and Los Angeles we have an out of proportion uh, percentages of uh, childhood obesity. And so we really need to do something about that. Um, you know, if you don't feel good and you don't eat right and you don't exercise, then it really does diminish your quality of life. Councilman O'Farrell, a former Oklahoma State champion gymnast, underwent a hernia operation three months ago. He recovered in virtually no time and credits that to a lifetime of healthy living. This is his first attempt at a gymnastics flip since the operation. It just goes to show that health and fitness can come at any age. And how are the kids doing? I'm with my friend from school and it's just really fun. It's pretty good. This is probably my favorite field trip I've ever had. Hoping the day leads to a lifetime of physical fitness. In Silver Lake, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Fifth graders taking part in the challenge attend Glen Fila's Ramona Grant Union and Fletcher Drive Elementary Schools. An annual festival showcases local artists with inspiring messages, one that brings the community together. Rasha Goel has more. Where community, businesses, um, neighbors from throughout the city of Los Angeles convene here at the La Brea Tar Pits um, to enjoy the sun, have fun. There's food trucks, there's game booths, there's performances. It's just a great day. Councilman David Rue was among the Angelinos at the 15th annual Tar Fest, an event showcasing some of the region's finest emerging artists, performers, and cultural innovators on the historic Miracle Mile. The music's been great, uh, the food was really good. It's just a nice atmosphere and I love the tar pits. Anything that has to do with community, community involvement, you know, we love to participate. The neighborhood comes out and supports. The festival was for the entire family with activities and a little something for everyone. 
The free music and arts event has been put on by a nonprofit, Launch LA, for the past 15 years. Launch LA believes exposure to the arts enhances quality of life and strengthens community. Well, there's lots to do. There are um, people painting and loads of kids around, and this just has a really nice vibe to it. With an eclectic mix of arts, it's one place you're open to create to the beat of your own drum. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Some traffic lanes that had been removed in Playa Vista will soon be restored, and community members celebrate two beloved venues within the city. All these stories in City Beat. Mayor Eric Garcetti and City Council member Mike Bonin announced a plan to restore traffic lanes on several roads in Playa del Rey and deliver a series of new safety features to help protect the lives of motorists, pedestrians, and cyclists. The move came after Garcetti and Bonin asked the Los Angeles Department of Transportation to immediately begin restoring lanes that had been removed on Culver Boulevard, Jefferson Boulevard, and Pershing Drive, and to install new strong traffic safety measures to be completed over the next several months. The new safety measures include new crosswalks with flashing beacons, speed tables that prompt vehicles to reduce speed at intersections, and many others. The City of Los Angeles Department of Rec and Parks, along with Council Member David Rue and the Travel Town Museum Foundation, celebrated Travel Town Museum's 65th birthday with a ribbon cutting ceremony for a new gift shop. The new larger gift shop will feature railroad related books, toys, clothes, and collectibles. All sales from the store support the Travel Town Museum Foundation, which runs the museum's volunteer programs, restoration projects, and educational outreach efforts. Travel Town is a very, truly unique experience. It's free and it's open to the public. And each year it hosts thousands of visitors, children and adults alike. On the other side of town, the Department of Rec and Parks also celebrated another city milestone, the 90th anniversary of the Holmby Park Lawn Bowling Club. Holmby Park, located in Holmby Hills, was originally part of a Spanish land grant and was deeded to the City of Los Angeles in 1926. One year later, the Holmby Park Lawn Bowling Club was established and remains the only lawn bowling club operating in the city of L.A. The club currently has 2,000 members, with the oldest member more than a century old. It's a sport where age doesn't matter. The oldest bowlers in the club are 103 and 100. It, it just matters how skillful you are. Well, it's another reason to enjoy green spaces in South L.A. The annual L.A. Power Fest brought close to 2,000 visitors to Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Anna Marcos brings us the highlights. The L.A. Power Fest brought out the dancing spirit in lots of folks around here, big and small. The annual party, hosted by the Community Coalition, is on its sixth year of celebrating a victory. The people in this corner of South L.A. have taken back their park. Just over seven years ago, this park had a closed-down rec center, no lighting, no sporting, lots of sex work, lots of, lots of drug addiction, uh, and we worked with the community to make this park a place for the community, and now we celebrate it. The health and wellness tent was pretty popular, providing just another reason for more dancing. But the kitty tent was pretty crowded, too with face painting, finger painting, brush painting, and, well, just all kinds of creative, messy stuff. Communities come out, enjoy the park, take over the green space, and enjoy some great music. But it wasn't just fun and games here. We have another tent around um, getting people to take action, um, to specifically to address some of the issues that are impacting our quality of life here in South Los Angeles. We get to learn about the issues that Community Coalition is working on, from criminalization of poverty to policing uh, to the way that we spend our dollars. Music, dancing, art, green spaces, and a chance to do good in your community. Not a bad way to spend a sunny Saturday in South L.A. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. The event also helped mark the groundbreaking for a new fitness trail in the park. Well, come out and celebrate Dia de las Muertas festivities at the city's most popular cultural destinations and take a walk on the wild side during a tour of Hollywood Forever Cemetery. All this in this week's Things to Do. 
For 44 years, Self-Help Graphics and Art has organized one of the most popular Dia de las Muertes events in L.A. and perhaps the oldest Day of the Dead commemoration in the country. This program is unique in that it provides the community with a season of activities from August to November to celebrate and prepare for Dia de las Muertes. The activities include the participation of over 50 community organizations, 150 plus volunteers and thousands of attendees. The 44th annual Dia de las Muertes celebration takes place on Saturday, November 4th at 4 p.m. at the Mariachi Plaza. And the celebrations continue throughout the weekend over at Plaza de la Raza as it hosts the 8th annual El Villario Dia de las Muertes cultural celebration. This memorable event celebrates the cultural spirit and heritage of Dia de las Muertes. The celebration will feature activities including an art exhibit showcasing the talents of over 100 various artists, showcasing original, one-of-a-kind Dia de las Muertes pieces. It all takes place Saturday, November 4th and November 5th at Plaza de la Raza. This November, commune with the spirits of Rudolph Valentino, Judy Garland, Cecil B. DeMille, John Huston, and others in Hollywood's most exclusive club, Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Join the official walking tour of the Cemetery of the Stars, revealing forgotten scandals from the early days of Hollywood, eulogizing beloved and little-known stars alike, and navigating the mysteries of Hollywood lore. Upcoming tours are November 4th and November 11th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.
911 emergency, operator 271. The city of Los Angeles receives over 2 million 911 calls every year. Hello, I'm Mayor Eric Garcetti. I'm Chief Charlie Beck. A significant number of 911 calls are not emergencies. 911 should be used for emergency calls, such as preservation of life, a crime in progress, prevention of a crime, or a public hazard. If your call is not an emergency, such as a loud party, verbal dispute, public nuisance, or lost or missing property, you can dial 1-877-ASK-LAPD to have the police respond. Remember, call 1-877-ASK-LAPD for non-emergency calls. Los Angeles Police Department, what are you reporting?
Good morning, good morning. It is Friday, November 3rd. I want to welcome you to City Hall. Uh, everybody, please take your seats. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfeld, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Harris, Dawson, Weezer, Coretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 10, 11 members, President and Quorum, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Shh. Okay, uh, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Krikorian uh, moves and uh, Rodriguez seconds next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Price moves and uh, Martinez seconds continue. Mr. President, there are requests to continue 1 E and G to December 8, 2017. Also, there is a request to reduce the liens for 1 B to $890.40 and reduce the lien for 1D to $1,038.80 in as much as the liens were partially paid. Okay, so without objection, move on to the next set of items. Item number one is an item notice for public hearing. Mr. President, there are cards on this. Then continue. Items two through 13 are items for which public hearings have been held. Committee reports for items 11, 12, and 13 have been submitted and posted and circulated for council's consideration. Okay, so um, let's hold item 11 and let's prepare to vote on Ms. Uh, Rodriguez. B special, please. Which one? 1B. One okay, it's my understanding that is being held. So let's uh, prepare to vote on the uh, remaining items. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Continue, Madam Clerk. Mr. President, there is a request to uh, have item 12 and 13 go forth with, sir. Without objection. Next are items 14 through 18, and those are items which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, so without objection, those items are now before this council. Mr. That brings President, us where? Uh, there are cards on fourth, 14 through 18, sir. Okay, then we will uh, continue. Mr. President, that brings council to items called special presentations or their, uh, the special meeting at for 1015, sir. Okay, at this time, Mr. Price. Thank you, Mr. President. For item 11, uh, I'd like to move that the council reaffirm and reinstate the council action of May 25th, 2016. Cal, okay, second that relative to, to the allocation of funds from the council community projects line item under general city purposes and instruct the city clerk to execute and process all documents and actions necessary to provide the balance of $70,000 under contract number C128446 to community build incorporated in the current fiscal year, please. Okay. And I will second that. Okay, at this time I'd like to recognize, I don't see him, but I'd like to recognize Mr. O'Farrell. Mr. Herman, sit down. Mr. Herman, sit down. You're not part of this presentation.
Amen and Abba Aka. Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Rudy Ortega Jr. and what we like to do is an invocation. And I'd like if everyone could stand. We come from different diversities. The tribes come from different cultures and traditions and religions, as well as people here in America and here in people in Los Angeles. So today we're gonna ask for prayer from all of you, to pray in your own way, to pray in your own custom, in your own tradition, your own religion. I have my cousin here, we're gonna sing a song as we get prayer. I ask all of you to pray. Amana Abaka. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Rudy Ortega Jr. I'm the chairman of the Los Angeles City County Native American Indian Commission. I'm also Fernandino Tataviam. And this morning, what we like to do is everyone to please stand as we give prayer. And I'm asking everyone to pray in their own way, their own traditions, their own religion. That we pray for unity, we pray for togetherness, and we pray in strength together. So I have my cousin here, Ray Rivera. We're going to sing a song as you pray. All together, we all pray together. Ah, na ho we, ah, na ho we, ah, nempone na ho we, ah, nempone na ho we, ah, na ho we, ah, na ho we, ah, nempone na ho we, ah, nempone na ho we. Ah na ho e ah na ho e ah na ho e ah nem pone na ho e ah nem pone na ho e ah na ho e ah na ho e ah nem pone na ho e ah nem pone na ho e ah na ho e ah na ho e ah we tiako. Thank you. May be seated. Thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, welcome. Welcome to the celebration of American Indian Heritage Month, month 2017 of the City of Los Angeles, as we recognize some very, very special honorees this morning. Uh, we're honoring today Ronald Philip Andrade, posthumously, we lost Ron about a year ago, Bethany Yellowtail, and Ashton Taylor Locklear. I also want to acknowledge Emily Sierra, Princess of the Sequan Reservation Powwow. Emily, please be recognized. I would like to recognize Ronald Andrade Jr. on behalf of the Ron Andrade family. Ron. Bethany Yellowtail, one of our honorees. and Ashton Taylor Locklear. I want to thank Rudy Ortega for giving that wonderful blessing. Uh, and I want to also thank Phil for the wonderful drum ceremony and officially welcome everyone in the chamber to this very, very special day. Also, we are especially honored to be able to shine the spotlight on the cultures and traditions of the rich Native American community in the city of Los Angeles and the Los Angeles area, home to the largest American Indian population in the entire country. The honorees that I mentioned truly embody this year's theme of strength and resilience through heritage and unity. Now is the time that we reclaim our history. Our first honoree is Ronald Philip Andrade. Ronald, more affectionately, affectionately known as Ron, was first and foremost a dedicated father to his children, a politician, a philanthropist, and an American Indian activist. Ron served in many capacities for the, the betterment of the Native American community. 
He was executive director of the San Francisco Indian Center in 1978, executive director, National Congress of American Indians from 1980 to 1983, Ron was appointed by President Ronald Reagan as a member of the National Advisory Council of Indian Education in 1988, most recently as Executive Director of the LA City County Native American Indian Commission for 20 years. He served as a policy watchdog on issues ranging from Indian child welfare to sacred sites, protection issues, and was a passionate and unwavering advocate for the community throughout the state and country. I would like to present this award to Ron Andrade Jr. on behalf of his late father. There you go. Thank you. You're certainly welcome. Hi, thank you, everybody. Um, it's it's truly an honor to be here and to, and to share this moment with not only my own family, but the family that my, my father built while working here in the county of Los Angeles. Um, and if I could just read off something that one of my sisters who couldn't be here today, who lives in North Carolina, um, she wrote this. So, I'm here to accept this award on behalf of my late father, but I'm also here to accept it on behalf of every other person he ever worked so hard for. The people he worked 80 hours a week he felt a personal responsibility to the people of the various communities he entered and always found himself into. Indian people were his absolute passion. Whether you liked him as a never and a factor in his was never a factor in his work. He was always able to earn your respect. Some days he was the bull, and some day he was grabbing the bulls by the horn. My father stood five foot two inches tall, and he was pure fury. When life pushed hard, he pushed back five times harder. He loved his city, this county, and his people that he never found and never ever had any intention of ever stop working so diligently for. He spread his passion through countless cities, counties, schools, and conferences. I think his greatest hope was to set a fire that the hearts of communities and people he served so that they could too set things ablaze with their passions so the circle could only continue. Really great, really great people feel like you too can become great. My family, my family are truly humbled and truly appreciative for this, for this recognition, and thank you from the Andrade family. And if I could just say something, because I always like to speak from my heart, just like my father did, is, is that I'm, I'm truly blessed to have known every person who ever worked with my father or ever knew my name. I never understood the great power that he had in the community or, or in the county alone, and it, it really does make me happy, and it truly does humble me down to my bones to know that his work didn't go in vain, and that his legacy didn't stop at when his life did. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our second honoree today, colleagues, is Bethany Yellowtail. And here is a video of Bethany Yellowtail. is Bethany Yellowtail. I come from the Crow and Northern Cheyenne Nations. I am the CEO and founder of Be Yellowtail Clothing Line, and I love my culture. The thing I wish people knew about my culture is that it's so diverse. There's over 566 tribes in the United States alone, and all of our nations are different. We speak different languages, different dialects. Our designs are very, very different, and that's what I love about what I do is I get to share those stories. When celebrities wear my designs, I feel really excited. I remember being a teenager and flipping through the magazines and not being able to see myself in them and not being able to identify with what was in the magazines. And now young people like me get to flip through the magazines or see on TV and they know that even though they're from the reservation or they're from a tribal community, that they can be there too. The reason I love fashion is because I get to express my identity through clothing. Every day I get to wake up and wear jewelry and clothing that is inspired and reminiscent of my ancestors. I get to wear moccasins on concrete streets. I get to wear beadwork that um, my ancestors wore and that my relatives make. I get to wear clothing that expresses uh, my love for my community and is deep-rooted in my culture. 
to young Native girls, I say you are brilliant, you are beautiful, you have the strength of your ancestors, and they fought hard for you to be here, so be who you were always meant to be. My proudest moment as a designer, I'll tell you what my proudest moment will be, <laughs> is when Beyonce is wearing the yellow tail. <laughs> That's my dream. <laughs> I love her. So colleagues, as featured on Good Morning America, recently on the MTV Music Awards, uh, she's an incredible, incredible honoree. Uh, her artistic vision and work is irremovable from her social justice vision for her community. In a world where indigenous images are often stolen or misappropriated, Bethany serves as an unapologetic arbiter of authenticity, a genuine voice who seeks to empower her people through design and representation. And the bolo tie that I'm wearing this morning is from the Bethany Yellowtail Collective. I introduce to you, colleagues, Bethany Yellowtail. Welcome. Oh you get it all. Uh, good morning. Uh, my Cheyenne name is Sunroad Woman. Um, it's such an honor to be here. Um, I was actually here about a week ago for the Office of um, Finance, brought in an LA Women's uh, panel, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, Councilmember Martinez and Rod Rodriguez. Um, so beautiful to see you here this morning, and I didn't think I'd see you again so soon. So. <laughs> um, I'd just like to first of all um, acknowledge, you know, that, that we're on Tongva land and um, LA. I've been here since I was 18 years old, and I feel like the Los Angeles community raised me. <laughs> um, and you know, I've been away from home for a long time. I'm from the Crow and Northern Cheyenne Nations in Montana, and um, I've really felt the strength of the ancestors here guide me and help me um, in my journey. And so I'd like to thank the Tongva community, um, the Los Angeles Native American community, and also um, my family back home who's always praying for me and um, guiding me forward. So, Nash, thank you. Our third honoree today, Ashton, step forward. Ashton Taylor Locklear. Los Angeles is honored to host the 2028 Olympics, and it gives me great pride and pleasure to present our final honoree. Please cue the video. Now, colleagues, how many of you can do that? <laughs> well, yeah. well, show off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the perfect merger of my love of gymnastics and having a world champion Native American gymnast from the United States. Ashton is an American artistic gymnast and Native American and a member of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. 
Her highlights include 2014 U.S. Uneven Bars Champion, 2014 World Team Champion and placing fourth in the Uneven Bars, 2016 Pac Pacific Rim Team and Uneven Bars Champion, 2016 U.S. Uneven Bars Champion, 2017 World Championships, finalist in the Uneven Bars Final, uh, 2017 U.S. Uneven Bars Silver Medalist, an Uneven Bars Specialist, but an incredible all-around gymnast, and an alternate for the 2016 Summer Olympics U.S. Gymnastics Team, the Final Five. Uh, her grit, determination, and winning spirit are what helped the U.S. Women's Gymnastics Team win the World Championships twice. Council colleagues, I present to you Ashton Locklear. First of all, I would just like to say thank you for inviting me here. It's such an honor to be here at this beautiful celebration. And I would like to thank Councilman O'Farrell and the rest of the council for honoring me. It is just an amazing honor and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Um, my biggest goal in life other than to go to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics is to inspire Native youth. And I hope that by what I'm doing today, in gymnastics and in everything, I can inspire them to follow their dreams also. Thank you. Fantastic. Colleagues, next I'd like to call up the president of the Los Angeles City County uh, Native American Commission, and that is Rudy Ortega, uh, to announce uh, the gifts. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what we'd like to do is, on behalf of the commission, we would like to uh, also acknowledge the honorees with these handmade Ackerman Pueblo um, potteries. Mm -hmm. And here's an example uh, for some of them. They were sitting right here in front. This is a handmade bear. Uh, we'd like to present it to for Ron Andrade and his family, Ron Jr. Wonderful. And this pot here uh, to Bethany Yellowtail. And then the final one to Aston Lockyard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. O'Farrell, I've been instructed to interrupt you at this point in time and tell the clerk, let us recess from the uh, regular meeting and go into our special uh, meeting. Would you please call a roll? Blumenfield, Bonin, Buscaino, Cedillo, Englander, Harris, Dawson, Weezar, Kuretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rodriguez, Rue, Wesson, 11 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay. Item, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. O'Farrell, now back to you for a uh, very important vote. Thank you so much. A few remarks, and then we're going to unveil the 2017 artwork. Colleagues, this year's celebration is especially important. Exactly two years ago today, I introduced a motion that directed city departments to identify a way to recognize the history, the contributions, and the sacrifices made by Native Americans in the city of Los Angeles. After a new, nearly two-year process, this past August 30th, this city council took a vote to remove Columbus Day from the city's administrative code and replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. I want to thank all of the tribal members, the elders, the leaders, the advocates, the volunteers, the academics, and friends, some gathered here today and some not, whose direct participation and sacrifice helped make this historic decision possible. And I want to thank you, Council President Herb Wesson, for leading in the process that daylighted the entire conversation, good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Your leadership is really what helped carry this through, and I thank you for that. And I want to thank you, council colleagues, 
for responding to this righteous justification made very clear by this community and our supporters through hours of testimony an acknowledgement of the historical record and recognition of the atrocities that occurred right here in the United States and in the state of California over a 500-year period, all set in motion the moment Christopher Columbus and his wayward sailors set foot in the Western Hemisphere and encountered First Peoples. Of the roughly 10 million Native Americans that lived in what is now the continental United States in 1492, by 1900, that number had dwindled to less than 300,000. The decline is generally believed to have been between 88 and 90 percent. Native Americans in North America experienced forced relocation, confiscated land, environmental ruin, biological warfare, mass slaughter, subjugation, and separation among family members, forced religious conversion, torture, erasure of tribal cultures and customs, which is especially harsh in California because of the mission system, and institutional racism. In a word, genocide. As we commemorate Heritage Month, we can be mindful of our history and appreciative of the fact that we are reclaiming it and daylighting it for the world to see. Although Native Americans only make up 2% of the population of the United States, our stories are getting told. Revisionist history is giving way to the truth, as difficult as it may be to accept, and America is responding. Since August 30th, when we said, Goodbye Columbus, Hello Indigenous Peoples Day, large and small cities, counties, and jurisdictions across the country and state have followed suit. Here's a short list. Los Angeles County, Los Angeles Unified School District, Long Beach, Austin, Texas, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Detroit, Michigan, the county of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Next up are cities like Washington, D.C., Fresno, and it's under consideration for the entire state of Wisconsin. Just like the Confederate flag and Confederate statues across the South, our symbol of hate and oppression will fall across the land, and I believe sooner than we may realize. Colleagues, to be of Native American descent, to have indigenous blood flowing through our veins is extra special. Given the fact, by the grace of our greater power, despite the demise of 90% of our ancestors, we stand here today a testament to that survival, that somehow the bloodlines of indigenous tribes have continued through us so that we may play a role in making sure that our history is reclaimed and that we have a voice and that our voice is helping change the world for the better. It is in this new environment that we celebrate today. Before we unveil this year's program, a special thank you to the Department of Cultural Affairs and artists Ray Rivera of the Pahi Creative Group for his wonderful, wonderful, inspiring work. So what I'd like to do now is reveal let the us, artwork uh, created by Ray Rivera. Let us, so we can uh, make sure that we're technically doing things as we should. Why don't we vote? Let me go back to the regular, and then we'll unveil if that's acceptable. That sounds great to me. And let's, uh, let's articulate what exactly we're voting on. Okay, Madam Clerk. Item 19 is a committee report and ordinance that, hold on, sorry. It, it is an arts, entertainment, parks and river committee report and ordinance relative to amending the Los Angeles Administrative Code pertaining to legal holidays for city employees to create an Indigenous People Day and remove the reference to Columbus Day. With that said, Mr. Clerk, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. That passes. Unanimous.
Mr. O'Farrell, I would now like to adjourn the special meeting, return to the regular meeting, and if you'd like to unveil, the floor is yours. All right, let's unveil the artwork. I think we're done. All right, so colleagues, thank you so much. We are having a big celebration uh, in the South Lawn, uh, starting in the immediate. So please come out, enjoy the festivities, the food, the music, the dancing. Uh, it is available, and uh, we invite all of you to come out and enjoy yourselves. And thank you one more time to the Los Angeles City, County, Native American Commission. Let's give them one more round of applause. Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. On item 1B, I'd like to uh, move to waive the outstanding balance and receive and file the matter, please. I'll second that. Thank you. So we'll just hold that item for a moment. Okay, I'd now like to uh, recognize Mr. Englander for a very important introduction. Mr. Englander, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, colleagues. We've got some very special guests, as you can see here, from the city of San Juan, Manila, the Philippines. The heart-shaped city is located in Metro Manila, nestled between uh, Kaizen City and Man Manila. So please rise and be recognized. Let's. Give them a big round of applause for being here today. Welcome. Though they may be geographically small, 
The city of San Juan is historically significant in terms of cultural contributions, uh, social prominence, economic progress, and of course, tourism potential. The delegation in the United States is here for an educational and at best practices trip, and of course, that's why they're here in Los Angeles. This delegation is particularly looking forward to learn more about what we're doing with health, education, tourism, disaster management, public information, city promotion, urban development, public works, appropriations, local governance, legislation, and policy making. Since October 18th, they've stayed in their sister city of Santa Barbara, and they will be in, in the Philippine consulate on November 8th, uh, and here visiting the entire city of Los Angeles all week long. So this delegation is remarkable, the folks that are here. We have, from the city of San Juan, Janela Ijarcito, our vice mayor, Leonardo Seyes, the city council president pro tem, which is a phenomenal title, the city council members, uh, Vincent Rainer, uh, Rainey Picheco from District 1, Arthur Alfred Aquino, Jose Warren Vahi, Alan Christopher Savano from District 2. We also have the executive officers, uh, Alan Marie Alehu from the Department Head of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, Grace Cortez, the Department Head of Public Information, Professor Gutierrez is here as well, university professor. Mr. Spindler, get out of this shot you're disrupting. Please go right now. No, you're not part of this. Sergeants, uh, I, Mr. Spindler, I'm we also sorry. have uh, visit, uh, Visitacion Martinez, the city director, Department of Interior and Local Government. Rowana Makalana Tall, the assistant to the vice mayor. And we want to welcome them all here for visiting Los Angeles and in this very important fact finding mission and what they're doing to bring these this, this best practices back uh, so they can help improve services to their local community as well. Let's give them a big round of applause. Welcome, Thank colleagues. Welcome. 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 Thank you very much. Thank All you, right. colleagues. I want to call up Mr. Previn. Mr. Previn. Mr. Previn, items 1A, B, C, D, 1F, 11, 14A, 15, 16, 17, 18A and general public comment. Uh, thank you, sir. It's Eric Previn from Studio City uh, in the second district. Um, what about item number 11? Because the amendment by Mr. Price. If you would have paid attention, you would I have did. heard me call out. No, you didn't, because I said item 11. So I, gave, I said you could speak on that. Well, look at that, sir. We're working cooperatively. No, we're together. not. You just well, yeah, need to no, pay I appreciate attention. That. I, we're not. We're not in conflict, sir. So you could de-escalate and stop interrupting me. Thank you. No, you just item want to speak a, on the item. Okay, come on, sir. Don't don't play the microphone game. It makes you look like a. Tiger. No, you want to speak or do you want to sit down? Financial status report. Financial status report. Thank you, sir. Don't shut the mic down. It's inappropriate. Now, do you want to but, speak? But it's my last sir. warning. You interrupt me again, then I will ask you to sit down. So you've got two minutes and some odd seconds left. Speak to the items. I told you the items that you could speak on. You and I are not going to go back and forth. Uh, the financial status report has just been published. It's the first one, I believe. And the question of judgment obligation bonds was raised. And it has come right down the pike. So we are really curious because we have been enduring an enormous amount of liability here at the city and in various categories, uh, many of which we're highly concerned about, like the, as you heard me say last week, over $20 million in bicycle-related claims in one calendar year, like the punishing array of harassment retaliation lawsuits, both in the LAPD and the LAFD. These are all addressed by the judgment obligation bonds that Fauble knows well about, and I've been in a very tight-knit conversation with the city attorneys and Mr. Llewellyn to get that information so that we can understand if we want to endure the kind of interest that we want to put on top of these payouts in order to protect the pristine nature of our budget. Pristine, by which I mean uh, problematic in many ways that are serious, and we need to take seriously out in the open. Mr. Krikorian and the other folks who work on that know that. So I'm not a big fan of shuffling everything off into the back. Okay, I'm not. 
said that before. And, you know, so we can move on for, to the, uh, the other items on the agenda, like, like the um, building and safety item, number one. We've got a number of building and safety uh, problems going on. Building and safety is the same group that is providing an enormous $162,000 refund to Iconic City LLC, which is the work of Mr. Joseph Lin, who's a great developer, but why he's getting such an enormous refund when we're pushing people who are barely getting by for putting up little cottages and places to sleep in their garages during a homeless crisis. And we find the time and energy to send out a crew to nail people some of these people from 2011, some of them from 2016, because we like to penalize people right in the here and now, too. But it's not what we want right now. What we want is businesses and people who are doing construction that's appropriate to have good service from building and safety give that we his, expect. Give him his minute. Okay, let, me just, let me just make it clear that it's not Mr. Bush and his crew who I'm upset hold, with. Hold his time. Well, well, now, uh, Mr. You... Hold his time. Mr. Uh, Herman, this is Mr. Previn's time. Hold, this is Mr. Previn's time. Okay, Mr. Previn, give him back his uh, minute. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I brought a couple of uh, little gifts for you. Uh, one is uh, about stress management, and the other is about bullying and prevention. I'm going to leave them here, and the, the officers who come and hook up the place like a little jail cell for the public to speak can give them to you later. But the point is, we're tired of being reduced on the telecast to the size of hashtag Bloomingfield's nose. And that's why we've engendered, uh, we've not engendered, we've uh, enjoined Mr. Rue, David Rue, who is a leader, a leader among men and women, who is going to provide you the support to get the mayor, because we know it's not you, sir, it's Mayor Garcetti, who is reducing Angelinos to the size of hashtag of Bloomingfield's nose. It's not okay, sir. We're not going to look away anymore. Looking away is out of fashion. Okay, ask Mr. Weinstein and ask all the people who have been doing terrible things. Obviously, this is not sexual harassment, but it's bad. Uh, Mr. Walsh, items uh, 1A, B, C, 14A, 15, 16, 17, 18A, general public comment. Sir, would you please take your seat? Yes, Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or J. Walsh Confidential. Uh, number one, of course, this is a nuisance abatement. You do a, a building and safety does a, a very good job. I'm not one of these white guys, hey, I want a bunch of crooks, I want a bunch of crooks. When you do a good job, I'm the first to admit that you do a good job. And then on... Uh, 14, this is uh, rent escrow, you do a good job on that. Uh, I've been here since 1960, I've been here since 1966. And uh, then we're talking about, okay, reward for information, 29 year old Carlos Iglesias. Look, everybody knows if you get murdered in the street by a gang, nobody is gonna turn you in. We know that. You could offer a billion dollars. You could offer a billion dollars instead of $50,000, and if your life is worth something to you, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to uh, award it. Uh, number, seven, uh, number 16 is, uh, number 17 uh, is additional street community cleaning efforts for District 9, your District 9 is filthy. Uh, you definitely need more cleaning there. Now I'd like to go into my public, general public comment, if I Could may. Could you give him his one minute? I'm telling you right now, thousands of dollars were spent out there on the steps of City Hall by the mayor for the Los Angeles Dodgers victory celebration. And when they lost, Yesterday, everything was taken down. Who is going to pay for that? The city is paying for a victory celebration that never happened. And the reporter, David Zanheiser, who has a crush on the mayor, was out there and saw it. I just want you to know, we live like in, in, in China, a communist China or Korea. A big celebration was set up, and then you lost the damn 
election and everything was taken down and there's nothing and the Times is on your side. We're asking the FBI to find out whether any federal money was spent on the celebration for the Dodgers' victory on the steps of City Hall that never happened. It never happened, thank but the rewards were out Thank you. There. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. You don't give a shit. Thank you. Uh, Leah, Renee, you have items 11, 15, and 18. If, what is your name, sir? Did you fill out a card? What is your name? My name is Joel Luis Torres. Well, I haven't gotten to you yet. I'll find your name. If you take a seat, I will not forget you. Hi, my name yes. is Leah. Could you do me a favor, and the people a favor, when you put the presentations, can you list what the presentations are so that people can be involved? You have some of the most amazing- you, You're on items, uh, Leah, 11, 15, and 18. And then you and, can go into general public comment. Okay. So items 11, 15, and 18. Okay, so I didn't get to do eight? 11, 15, and 18. Item 8 has already been voted on. It's done. Okay. Why didn't you call me? So you have, I told 11, you your items. So 11. 11. I'm going to bring to your attention on 11. It says city continues to face a structural deficit. The, one of the major reasons that the city continues to face a structural deficit is that you're not collecting your fees. You're allowing the people in the city planning department, the building and safety, to fill false and fraudulent applications. I'm going to show you how they do it. I'm going to use 283 Trina Wade as an example, but I've seen it in every single case. And I've bought hundreds of thousands of dollars of paperwork. You can check that out. So what they do is they submit an application, okay? And it's false, fraudulent, and conceals material facts. And then what happens is your city planning, you all have a copy of this right away. So here it is. I, I will hand it out to you so you can double check it. So I put it as thing two and three. The scheme is it gets submitted to city planning with false or fraudulent information, and then your planning department alters it. They alter it. So on this one was on June, when was it? It was submitted on July 20th, 2016. Then on November 4th, 2016, they submitted another application. Then what they did is they superseded it the same day. And then on June 20th, 2017, they revised it again. And it's a different increments. It's a different project. It's got different ARBs. So you're missing all your fees. So you're preparing a fraudulent document. That's like a California penal code. I think it's 134. You can check it out. I wrote it here. But to say you don't have money, you're not collecting your own fees. And you're also not collecting the property taxes that go through the building and safety because they call it a house when there's no house. Anyway, I, I laid that all out for you. Um, that was on um, why you don't have money. And um, on item 15, you're also not uh, preparing building plans that meet the requirements of the very high fire hazard severity zone. I brought that to Bonham's attention on middle, multiple times because a lot of it's in his district. And he's aware of it, and he doesn't get back to me. Let's give her, her uh, one minute for general public comment. Okay. So I'm going to bring to your attention item number. Um, it's application DIR 20162561 CDP for 283 Trina Way. They have falsified. Hello, Mayor Garcetti. How wonderful that you're here today. Thank you so much for being here. Could you please fix this problem? That would be great, because you're the man they hold accountable to this. Thank you so much for coming out today. I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Who's that going to be? Whose name is on it? I got 28 seconds. Whose name is on it? It's public comment. How fabulous. Is somebody going to tell me whose name is on it? Okay, so it is 283 Trina Way, McPherson, Scott McPherson of McPherson Oil. He has violated the Coastal Act, and the city has fraudulently, alt corruptly altered 
the state law to remove the quality out of the Environmental Quality Act. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Uh, now I'm going to, uh, Mr. City Attorney, I'm going to put the uh, public comment on hold. I want to. We have a couple of special guests with us. Let's recognize our mayor, Eric Garcetti, for a special introduction. Thank well, you, Mr. President. Well, I just wanted to introduce a great mayor here who's visiting us from the other LA, Louisiana, New Orleans, the great mayor of New Orleans, Mitch Landrew, who some of you may know not only for his leadership in rebuilding New Orleans, uh, but recently taking down the Robert E. Lee statue in his city. He's the president of the US Conference of Mayors right now and an extraordinary friend and mayor and American. So give a warm LA welcome to Mayor Mitch Landrew of New Orleans. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. We got that one on? No, we're, we're rolling. Mr. Go ahead. Mr. President, council members, thank you so much for having me. I've been with you, great mayor, today. We just came and we, we walked through the regional connector, which is just, it's an amazing infrastructure project for America. And Mayor Garcetti has been leading that on behalf of mayors across America to talk about ways that we can actually just do the work of the American people, put people back to work and get them to work quickly. Because as I told him, on the local level, we govern in real time and in reality, not in theory or ideology. And I think Los Angeles is leading the way. So I just wanted to come by and see all of you today, tell you thank you for the work. Thank you for leading America. Mayor Garcetti, thank you for your leadership. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much. Okay, what, uh, we're going to, for about 20 seconds, recess this meeting. Ms. Torres? Mr. Torres, right? We should come forward. You signed up to speak on an item that, uh, I, I'm not finished. You signed up to speak on an item that's already been voted on. So I'm gonna give you general public comment so you can go right ahead, sir. Oh, well, I guess my, um, my general comment would be that uh, I have uh, yet to see any affordable housing and I really didn't, uh, I really don't care who gets appointed. Um, I just would like to uh, emphasize that as time is progressing and as we're seeing development in, in Los Angeles, our rent is skyrocketing. Uh, I'm someone who lived here, I'm a Los Angeles native, I've lived here for 18 years and I left, uh, been to several states because of the army and uh, I've seen that I have never, I haven't been to a place where I paid $1,700 a month for a one bedroom apartment other than Los Angeles, California. I've been, I've driven from Raleigh, North Carolina all the way here and in between the states I have never seen prices that, that high. And uh, as we're getting more things, like the Olympics coming up in a few years, is only gonna get worse. Uh, that and with parking. Like, I can't believe that the people who live here, who own homes, who own property, can't park in front of their own house because of an event. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Lady, I see you in the back. Ms. Ponce, please come forward. I saw you back Thank there. Thank you. And I did fill out, my elder filled out a card for me because I was waiting for the No, I got elder. you. Thank you. 
Good morning, and it's a beautiful day to be indigenous, and every day is a beautiful day. Um, recently, at the West LA APC um, hearing on Wednesday, they upheld our findings for an appeal regarding our dual, dual jurisdiction of Venice, specifically um, the CDP, the CEQA, and the Mellow Act for um, nine affordable units that have been found to be affordable units. And that particular developer, as we worked with them for a year and a half, a year and seven months or so, that um, he cannot build um, a mixed use um, development. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the process in working with the community and holding truth to our affordable housing within our dual jurisdiction. Now I stand before you asking to consider each and every single one of you a community oversight committee because that works. Our neighborhood councils are held hijacked by $30,000 for their budget and they're busy arguing amongst themselves Thank and you. they're not here. Thank you, okay. Could we pull up uh, Mr. Spindler? Mr. Spindler, you have one A and B, C, D, F, 11, 14, A, 15, 16, 17, 18, A, and general public comment. Yes, it's good. It's good for other mayors to come here and see the First Amendment. Now, number one, a lien in CD 11. We don't want liens in CD 11. CD 7, Monica has one, two, three. Terrible liens. Monica can eliminate them on her own motion. They were caused by Felipe Fuentes. Undo the evil of Mr. Fuentes, especially the sexual harasser, Mr. Bush. No, you're going to stay on the Green. subject, Mr. Spindler. Yes. Stay on the topic, or I'm going to take over. All right, all right. So Mr. Spindler, Mr. Spindler. Yes, sir. Let's no. give him his general public he's comment. Obviously, me. you don't want to cooperate today. No, he's talking today. to me. No, Goddamn just... puppet. I'm sorry. All right. I, you know, I, I just, I don't want to be held up because of what my puppet does. I can't control what he does sometimes, you know. But anyway, you know, another serial Brown Act violation. I'm going to head over to Spring Street and file more paperwork in my federal cases on the same thing you keep violating my rights. Please stop doing this. It's not good for the city. Your city attorney's getting an ulcer over having to answer another 29-page response I'm going to file today. It takes too much time. We just want to come up here and talk. We just want to come up here and talk. So we went to Venice. On Wednesday night, we defeated your $8 million front walk fucking project. So, while Herbie's asleep, the cats will play fuck the Dodgers! Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's pull up Mr. Uh, Herman. Mr. Herman, you have items 1A, 14A, 15, 16, 17, 18A, and then you have general public uh, comment. Fellow Americans, as we know today regarding the reward of information leading to the identification and apprehension, excuse me, I'm speaking please, convictions of a 29-year-old man, I guess it doesn't matter because the conversation's over there. Mr. Carlos Speak on the Iglesias on August 3rd was gunned down in the city of Los Angeles the same way we gunned down all those white niggers in other countries to defend the American responsibility of life, liberty, and justice for all. The reward for $50,000 is quite not enough information. Snitches get stitches. And if you're a rat, you end up in a trap. No protection by the city attorney. So stay away from these potential threats as you become the next victim of motion item 16-170010-S32 for the record. And then when I go into the liens as brought out by Ms. Renee for the record, you're hearing protests on how the conduct of the Department of Building and Safety 
has bamboozled, squandered, lied, and purged on documents dealing with the Department of Building and Safety. In regards to CD 11, 3781 South Bozy, I say you forgive and forget because there's no bond in there to push a button. And then when I speak on the other items in CD7, 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 8652 West Foothill Boulevard, AKA 8656 West Foothill Boulevard, a mere amount of $3,000. There was no certified mail ever, ever, ever placed at the door. How American is that? You can't get U.S. mail certified to bring to the attention that Building and Safety has placed a lien on your goddamn motherfucking property. And so as long as there's conversation by that dumb fuck goat uh, over there, I can't think. So I'll give him his one minute for general public comment. So you see, when the Dodgers lost, the fool Eric Garcetti, for the record, was here. He put up a stage hoping that the Dodgers would fucking win. But the win goes to HHH, Houston, HHH. Thank you for buying all the booze and all the retreats that we offer in Los Angeles, Angelinos, because we make it happen. We spend our fucking American money in America, Houston style. Win, 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 Mr. City Attorney. So on record, rookie, pay back for that fucked up stage you put out there in ceremony of the Dodgers, LLC Dodgers. Because we, the public, demand more H, 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 you fucking assholes, so that all of us can live in housing brought up by the gentleman, army man. Fuck all of you, 42 USC. Thank you. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, your time has expired. Mr. Herman, quit disrupting the meeting. Now your time is over. Okay, let's vote on item 11. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Now let's move on and vote on items. 11, urgent forthwith, sir. Well, without objection. Uh, that requires a vote, and, sir. And l let me just remind that. Let's, was, uh, that was as amended by Mr. Price. Okay, so let's vote on the urgent forth with let's open the roll close the roll tabulate the vote 11 eyes now let's move to items 14 through 18 please open the roll close the roll tabulate the vote 11 eyes now we'll vote on item one if you'd open the roll uh, everything except for 1b which was amended sir so 1b should have a separate vote sir then that's the way we'll do it so let's open the roll Close the roll, tabulate. 11 eyes. Now we'll do 1B. Let's open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 eyes. Mr. Price, did you? Seven. 17 forthwith. All right. Uh, what's before this body? Mr. President, council has motions for posting a referral. They're posted, they're referred. Announcements, members? No announcements. If I could ask all to please rise. All, all please rise for adjourning motions. All please rise. Okay, Mr. Herman, please. This is our moment, not yours. So you're disrupting the meeting. Please be quiet as we adjourn in the memory. I'm looking to Mr. Koretz's side. I don't see any adjourning motions to my right. I'm now looking to my left. I don't see any adjourning motions to my left. Members, this meeting is adjourned.
USA Recycling handles 2.5 million gross ton recycled product, and 60% of that goes through Port of Los Angeles. Our goal is zero waste. Anything you can imagine, you can recycle. When the material comes here, some of the material goes to the pile, ready to ship, and the other material, like cars, appliances, needs to go to our mega shredder, which is 9,000 horsepower. My story pretty much tells about our corporate culture, creating equal opportunity for everyone. I'm from Turkey, I was born and raised in Istanbul. I started working at SA Recycling as a driver for our president and CEO, George Adams, which literally the job changed my life. One year after finishing the manager and training program, they gave me a brand new facility and I start taking over more struggling locations. I oversee 13 locations from Oxnard all the way to Carson. We have 400 employees in Los Angeles area, including the port region. Hundreds of Los Angeles residents use recycling as their main source of income. This ship takes 36 to 40,000 gross tons of recycled products, scrap metal. We're using our brand new crane, which is hybrid, electric power, and goes to different parts of the world, depends about the market. Requires 56% less energy when you're producing new steel from recycled material like this, instead of using iron ore or any other virgin material. It really helps to reduce the carbon dioxide emission in our air. I'm a big fan of the environment, spending time in nature with my beautiful wife, Andrea, and my dog. I like my job because helping others, creating a lot of jobs for the local community. The challenge is everywhere, right? If the people, they tell you, you cannot do it, that motivates me more to achieve something. When, uh one of the guys 